It is the opening day series for 2024 between the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies. How fitting that that is. And we got Connor Thomas joining the show today is what we're both going to do a crossover episode to preview this upcoming series. If you didn't know, I am Jake Mastriani, host of Locked On Braves. And with me is Connor Thomas, host of Locked On Phillies. Make sure you subscribe to both of these podcast this upcoming year for the two best teams in the NL East, I think, in my opinion, uh, Connor. So really excited to get into our conversation today. Before we do, though, I want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase, which you're going to need with opening day and baseball season coming up. So make sure you use that code. All right, Connor, I am super excited about this series. And, you know, it is the first series of the year. It's not going to be decided. Look, I'll go ahead and tell Braves fans and Phillies fans, either team can get swept in this series. It's not going to mean much towards the end. But it is pretty cool that I think these are the two best teams in the National League East. Maybe the National League, obviously, the Dodgers in that mix as well. And there's they've ended, at least for the Braves' point, has ended the last two years with this matchup. And now we get to see it again to start 2024. So, uh, Connor, let's just kick off in, with the offseason talk a little bit. I asked you some questions on the Phillies, and you can come back and ask me some stuff on the Braves. But Sounds for this offseason for the Phillies, I mean, you bring Nola back. You extend Zach Wheeler. I think one of the best moves of the offseason for the Phillies was getting with Merrifield. That was one that I was really hoping the Braves would go do to just solidify their bench and utility role. But how did you feel about the offseason for the Phillies? I felt awesome about it. And the thing that has really troubled Phillies fans is from the perspective of people in Philadelphia, this team has come up short, even though like when you look at it from Atlanta's perspective or from really any other team in the National League's perspective, you say, what do you mean come up short? They went to the World Series two years ago. They were a game away from it this past year. But when you don't actually bring home the trophy, the expectation from this fan base is still okay, you got to go make some big, splashy move. And they didn't really do that this offseason. They didn't go Blake Snell. They didn't go uh, any of those big names. They made an offer to Yamamoto, but obviously he ends up in Dodger Blue, like half of the free agents available. Uh, bottom line is they aren't far away. Same with the Braves. And you know when you're close, what you're going to see is not huge roster changes. You're going to see tweaks here and there, the bullpen, to the depth, bringing guys back. Uh, so that you can run back a similar roster. And that's what the Phillies did. So I couldn't be happier with the offseason. Yeah, I think it's a very, very smart move. I mean, for a team in the Phillies, look, they, they spend money. The Braves are at that point now where they're spending a lot of money, but both teams are very capable of winning a World Series if things go their way. And yeah, I think you make a great point. The Phillies didn't have to go out and blow things up. The Braves didn't have to go out and blow things up. They just needed to make some small tweaks here and there to increase the depth of the team and put themselves in the best of chance, chance position to hopefully win a World Series. You bring up the the conversation of Phillies fans not being satisfied. You know, Braves fans aren't, and it's it's funny to see that dialogue play out on social media, where you know Phillies fans getting all over for Braves fans because they've ended their season the last two years. Braves fans going back to 2021, and it's just it is. Look, Braves fans know. It's not just winning the division anymore. You can't just settle for that. It's not just getting to the postseason anymore. This team is good enough to win a World Series, and I think the Phillies are right there in that same boat. Like I said, with the Dodgers, I think those are the three teams specifically this year that coming coming into the season said it's it's World Series or bust for that. I know that's been the, been the talk in Braves camp, and I'm sure it has been for the Phillies and Dodgers as well. But with that, what concerns you the most about this Phillies team? Because as we said, I think on paper – this team's very, very talented, good enough to win a World Series if things go their way. But what concerns you the most that might prevent that from happening? Yeah, there's two things. So let's start with the regular season because we've got 162 games before anyone makes the postseason. Uh, but the pitching staff has already had a couple of injuries. Taiwan Walker is going to start the season on the injured list, which means Spencer Turnbull, who pitched sometime in Detroit, but had Tommy John surgery, hasn't been the same since. Like He's going to have to make starts for this team earlier on in the season. If the pitching staff runs into injuries, there's not a lot of depth there for the Phillies to go to. So over the regular season, that's already a question mark. Now, luckily, we'll have enough guys to get through the Brave series without having to dip into the depth, but that's for later on. And then the postseason, this is actually something I talked about on the radio today. It, how long can we as Phillies fans expect to beat 
a hundred win Braves team in the postseason, and how long can we expect the Dodgers to choke it away before you actually run into them in the bracket? Like at some point, the hundred win Braves teams are going to eventually figure out how to beat the brakes off the Phillies in the postseason. So it would make Phillies fans feel a lot better if you got into a position where you competed for the division, maybe won 95 plus games yourself. And I think for the psyche, that would be huge. So it's a combination of those things, pitching and staying healthy, but also getting into the postseason. What could stop them? Well, simply enough, there's two really good teams in the National League, and one of them's right in your own division with Atlanta. Yeah, and, and another 84-win team may come in and just surprise us all again because that apparently happens in the postseason in baseball. But uh, the one thing that concerns me about the Philly, there's two things that concern me, or the outside viewer of the Phillies, is – a lot of the, the main guys are getting into their 30s and mid-30s. I would expect some regression for Rio Muto and Castellanos. I know you're not planning on that or hoping for that, but they are getting into their mid-30s. So I think pivoting from that, the key is Stott and Bohm, because those are two of your younger guys. I think if there is some decline for some of those older guys, can those two step up and be big parts in the lineup? And the other thing is kind of what you touched on. Who's there behind Wheeler and Nola? We know how special they are, how talented they are. The Braves apparently had a lot of interest in, in getting Nola, and I think it's because of just that durability that he has. You know you have those two workhorses. Is what we saw from Ranger Suarez in the postseason legit? Is what we saw from Christopher Sanchez at the end of last season legit? For me, those are two of the question marks, again, just from an outside looking in perspective from the Phillies. How do you feel about both of those situations? Yeah, as far as the regression, it's not something that I'm planning on for Castellanos and Ramuto, but it's got to be something you plan for if you're the Philadelphia Phillies because Ramuto catches a lot of innings. Castellanos is not a like heavily athletic player. He's a great hitter, but he's not one of these guys in unbelievable shape. You can see him play till he's 45 and be the same. Like They're aging, as is Kyle Schwarber. Uh, I mean, you've got guys that are going to potentially be in for a step back. And the young players like Bryson Stott had a breakout year last year. I wonder if that's a blip on the radar. Alec Bohm has shown a little bit more power and some better defending since the start of last season. But the question for those two guys is, were those good years or were those the start of a good stretch of being a great baseball player? And you don't know until you see the guy do it twice. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. And to your question about the rotation, there is one more guy to keep an eye on for the Phillies this year. I know you guys always have in Atlanta. There's always somebody that comes out of nowhere. It's like they called this dude up, and the next thing you know, he's in some Cy Young conversation or he's striking out a billion guys a year. This year's our turn, but you already know the guy. Ranger Suarez, I think, is going to have a great year. He's finally healthy and available through spring training for the first time since the season where he had a sub-2 ERA in over 100 innings pitched. That was back in 2021, and since that, he's had injuries, he's had visa problems, never started off the year clean. So if he's really good, you got a great one, two, three punch, and then you just kind of got to survive the fourth and the fifth spots in the rotation and hope this offense carries. So it's not as deep of a rotation as far as if injuries happen as you would like here in Philadelphia, but it's deep enough at the top that you could be a really powerful team pitching wise. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. I think the key though is getting to the postseason or getting in the postseason, obviously is the first step, but getting there with Wheeler and Nola, I think it's very important for the Phillies to have those two. As for the Braves having their t top two and Strider and Freed available and healthy for the postseason, and that's something the Phillies have done a great job of. My last question for you, and you kind of touched on this a minute ago, so I think I might know which way you're leaning, but how important is it to you to win the NL East? Because look, the last two years with the new, new postseason format, it has not gone well for the Braves, and the Phillies on the flip side have had a very – you know, good recipe for getting that wild card spot, winning that first round, carrying that momentum into the DS and CS. So as a Phillies fan, somebody who's gone a different route the past two years in this playoff format, I'm really curious to get your perspective. How important is it for you that the Phillies, you know, do everything they can to win the NL East, get one of those buys? Yeah, Jake, I'm gonna need your help with this because I've been trying to convince Phillies fans. And every time I say it this way, people lose their minds whether it's here on the podcast, whether it's on the radio, it doesn't matter whether or not they win the division. And whenever I say that, the immediate response from people in Philadelphia is, oh, what, so you don't want to win the division? That's not what I'm saying. If they win the division, great. But ultimately, if they don't, it means nothing as long as you're in the postseason. 
from a Phillies fan's perspective, it almost feels defeatist. You're almost handing the division to the Braves saying, hey, we don't care if the Braves win the division for the, what is it, 28th year in a row. <laughs> but um, from your perspective as a Braves fan, I'd love for – listeners the locked on Phillies just to hear because I imagine seeing the way the Braves have gone out the past two postseasons you're kind of losing the look of luster towards the division yourself right yeah I, I would yes absolutely and it, it is crazy for me to say because I am very much one of those that is 162 is very important and should be very mm -hmm. important winning the division should be very important but after two years of seeing how this has played out I met the first time ever I don't care I, I mean <laughs> I'm saying that because I know there's a very good chance if they don't win the division, they're still going to get in the postseason. But, look, I want them to win the postseason. I still think that's the best possible route to go. But it, it hasn't seemed to matter the last two years in this format. It's more important to me that the Braves get to the postseason and get there healthy, fresh, and ready to go. And if that means sacrificing a few wins in the regular season, perhaps missing out on the division to do that, so be it. But you're right. I mean, for me, I just, I really, and it hurts me to say this because, like I said, I am a 162 guy, but mm -hmm. it just, it doesn't matter as much yeah. to me. It's more about just getting to the postseason, make sure you're playing your best baseball at that time. And that's all that really matters. Yeah. I'm the same way now after what I've seen the Phillies do the past two years. It's just there's a section of the fan base, a big section that makes you feel like, oh, you're just giving up and saying the Braves are too good. And now maybe if they hear it from the other side, that other teams in the division are realizing divisions just aren't that important right now as the wild card structure takes place with the extra teams in there, maybe that'll finally hit for some Phillies fans out there that have been mad at me. So appreciate it. Yeah, no, like I said, I man, at the end of the day, yes, you want to win a division. It is a, comp a great accomplishment over 162. I don't think the – advantage you get in the postseason has obviously helped the Braves at all. I think that long layoff is definitely a detriment offensively. And then you run into a good team like the Phillies who match up very well with you coming off a series win. I, I just don't think the reward is as great as they thought it would be for those top two teams. And I just, I think it matters again, to repeat myself, it matters more to being playing your best baseball and being healthy at that time is, is more important to me than winning the division. So we'll see how things play out. It's obviously going to be, I think, these two teams going at it, and we'll see who comes out on top. You know the Braves are going to go for it. They've already said that. You know, their, their goal is still to win the division and get one of those buys. So that's certainly what they are hoping for. Uh, we'll see how things play out. All right, next, we'll kind of turn the page here. I'll let Connor ask me some questions about the Braves coming into this year. Before we do that, though, we'll talk to you about prize picks. March Madness is here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are happening. Be a part of the action on prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Prize picks even offers injury insurance so that if your injuries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if they get injured in the first half, don't come back for the second half. That player projection won't count, it count against you and the rest of your entry stays alive. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts, and Prize Picks is really simple to play. Even Connor can do it. I can make my <laughs> picks, submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. And opening day is coming up this weekend, opening day weekend. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to get in on all the MLB action, pick more or less for your favorite players and teams. It's really just that simple. Pick two to six players or groups of players and decide if you think they'll get more or less on certain stats like strikeouts, hits, home runs, and many, many more. Download the app today. Use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, man. It's my turn to uh, ask you about what's going on with the offseason with the Braves. And I'm super interested in the pitching staff. That's where a lot of the focus seems to have gone, rebuilding that bullpen to where you guys need it to be. Uh, but And we're going to get into Spencer Strider. Trust me. We've all noticed the spring he's been having. We all know the season he's projected to have. We all know we're seeing him on opening day. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But let's start with Chris Sale. And a lot of people hear that name and think about the Chris Sale that was absolutely dominant for a stretch, throws from the weird arm slot, throws unhittable pitches that are on such a weird plane that no one can pick him up and throws gas. And to me, he's not quite that pitcher anymore. 
but that doesn't make him not still a great pitcher. He's just slightly less dominant than like a perennial Cy Young contender. So from a Braves fan's perspective, when you guys get Chris Sale, you acquire him for the season, like what does that do for the starting rotation for you? It, it immediately makes it one of the best rotations in all of baseball. Look, Chris Sale, when he's been healthy, he's still a really good pitcher. Now he hasn't been healthy a lot, but even if you go back and look at what he did last year in Boston over 100 innings and you look at the metrics, he still had a very high whiff rate on that that slider. He still had a very high strikeout percentage and the ERA was over four, but expected ERA was under, Like as you said, I don't think he's that Cy Young contender that he used to be, but I think he'd be a very solid number three that pitches like a number two at times and he's going to go out there and strike out over a batter in inning. I think he's going to have a 3-8 ERA. I think he's going to be really, really good. The question is, the issue is, can he stay healthy? How many innings can you get out of him? And this is kind of what I was alluding to earlier, talking about making sure that you're healthy and fresh at the right time for the end of the season. And I think with going out and getting Chris Sale, they did it, I think, with a, a Philly series in mind. Not necessarily specifically that, but just look, the last two years, the Braves have come in with Two pitchers either banged up or two years ago, Freed coming off a, a bad illness. They've, they've gone banged up in their rotation the last two years. And just getting Chris Sale gives them another arm that if they do happen to lose somebody, they're not counting on a, a rookie Bryce Elder to come in and pitch game three of a series. They're hopefully relying on a either a Chris Sale or a Charlie Morton to come in and do that. So I think this gives them more insurance for the postseason. And I think this was a postseason-minded move to get another veteran like Chris Sale. But I think it makes this rotation, like I said, one of the best in baseball because I, I think Chris Sale, if he proves to be healthy, I think he's going to be a very solid starter for the Braves. Again, can you get 150 innings out of him in the regular season and still have him fresh and ready to go for the postseason? I think that's what the Braves are going to have to to manage and figure out. But I was super excited about the Chris Sale move and getting him and adding him to this rotation. Look, Charlie Morton's turning 40. Uh, so, I mean, you got to expect some decline there, but now he's your four starter. You're not counting him to come in and be that, that number three, which I think Chris Sale could be for the Braves. Yeah. And God knows that you guys need more pitching. I mean, it seems like every year you got a guy that comes up that's unbelievable that I'm sure you'll be able to add to either that rotation or the bullpen. Uh, let's stay with the pitching because I want to know uh, the focus on the bullpen this off season. Talk a little bit about why the Braves wanted to focus so much on improving that bullpen and how you think they did with the moves. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it kind of goes back to what's happened in the postseason the last two years. You look at the the arms the Phillies have and what they've done in their bullpen, and a lot of the talk last postseason was, you know, look at all the, the hard-throwing arms that the Phillies have in comparison to the Braves, which, you know, the Braves have a lot of guys that throw 95, 96, but Phillies got a lot of guys that throw 97, 98, 99 and I think there was a focus to kind of get some more of those those big arms those high velocity arms and you look at a guy like an Aaron Bummer that they went and got another lefty and a lefty that throws hard with a good sinker from a weird arm angle that's going to be tough on Schwarber hopefully going to be tough on a, even a Bryce Harper I don't know if anything's tough on him but but hopefully will help a little bit eliminate some of those lefties so I think it's key. Look, bullpen arms are finicky year to year. I always say it. You never know what you're going to get season to season from bullpen arms. But I think the Braves have gone out and done a great job of just acquiring depth in the bullpen because things are going to change throughout the year. You look at a Tyler Matzik coming back. He doesn't appear to be the Tyler Matzik from 2021 where he was a postseason hero, but you know he's another tough lefty in there. Uh, you know, you had Ken Giles, the guy that they signed. He looked great in spring training. He wasn't 100 miles Giles like he was in the past, but he was still throwing 96 and looked really good. So I, I think they have just gone out and acquired a lot of really good arms to give them a lot of depth, again, to help them come postseason time. Look, it didn't much matter a lot for that Philly series because the Braves never could get to the end of the game with a lead. Um, and the one time they did, they almost blew it. So it's, you know, but it is, it is about just acquiring that depth, having a ton of arms that you can trust come postseason time. Yeah, absolutely. Pitching is hugely important. The Braves know that. The Phillies know that. So this is just building up to make an inevitable postseason series that we all believe is coming again that much more interesting this time around. And one more thing I'll get to before we uh, turn it over towards looking at opening day. 
you had such an amazing year from some big time guys. Acuna was unbelievable in his NL MVP campaign last year. Matt Olson, I don't think when the Braves acquired Matt Olson, anyone believed that he could be this much of what Freddie Freeman was to this team. Like you knew he was going to be good. And then, my God, this guy is just, he might be better at points than Freddie Freeman, which is insane. But I think, at least from the outside perspective, correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like there could be regression coming from those guys too. Not saying they're going to have bad years, but how in the world do they repeat what they did last year? Is there a worry that there might just be a natural comeback down to earth? They can't be <laughs> Hall of Fame every single year forever, guys, can they? No, well, I don't know. I'm not putting anything past Ronald Acuna Jr. and what he can do. I think if he wants to go out and, and do 50, 80, I think he can do it. I don't think there's any limitations for Ronald Acuna Jr. But yeah, we've talked about it on the podcast, the fact that you got to expect some regression. I don't think Ozuna is going to hit 40 homers again. I don't think mm -hmm. I don't think Matt Olson's going to hit 50 plus homers again. I don't think they're going to set a record for the history of baseball and slugging percentage again. But even if they just came back down to career norms, I think it's still going to be the best offense in baseball. You look at the differences between what they did in home runs and runs scored and slugging percentage, and you look at who was second, and they were still like 30, 40, 50 points higher than the second best team offensively. So, yeah, they're going to regress. I, I would imagine a lot of these hitters are going to regress and come down. And even if they do, I still think it's going to be at least top five offense in baseball, if not the best offense and baseball again. I'm also looking at guys like Austin Riley, who had a really good year last year, but I think he has more in the tank. I'm looking at somebody like Michael Harris coming into his third season now and somebody that I think he can be a 25-25 a type of player, be an all-star level player. So while I do think, you know, an Olsen and Ozuna uh, and Albies even probably have some regression, I think Sean Murphy, who had a great first half, got injured, banged up in the in the second half a little bit and cooled off in the second half, I think he could come out and have a monster season and be maybe the best catcher in baseball. So I, I think there, while there are some regression candidates, I think there's some other guys in there as well that could have some some breakout seasons, some big seasons to kind of help offset that. But yeah, I can't I can't predict them to have a, a team slugging percentage over 500 again. That was just a ridiculous season. And yet they might still do it because that's just how good this team is. And that's how great Alex Anthopoulos is about locking these guys up and putting together a roster that always is going to compete. Honestly, we are so lucky that we get to watch this opening series with the pitchers available rest in the start of the season with this. So coming up, we're going to nerd out a little bit about Spencer Strider, Zach Wheeler, and what we're going to see on opening day coming up later in the week. But first, before we do that, I want to tell you about game time. Yeah, game time is great. You took a shot at me during prize picks. I'm going to take a shot here. Jake wants to go to one of the Braves' two home playoff games that they play every year before they get knocked out by the Phillies. You should go to game time because you shouldn't have to worry about finding tickets when the big event comes around that you want to go to. It might be a playoff baseball game. It might be a concert theater, music, stuff like that, comedy, all that great stuff. You want to check out Game Time because they have killer last-minute deals. They have killer early deals if you plan it out. You can use Game Time all the time. It doesn't have to be just before you go to the event. But if you do use it right before the event, they've got all these great things like flash sales on great deals on tickets last minute. They have zone deals. So if you let them pick the section in the seat for you, you're going to get a great deal on that. And all of this stuff is baked in. You can see the view from your seat. You're going to know the total cost of the tickets before you get to that checkout screen, so they're not surprising you with fees last minute. And they got the game time guarantee, which means if you can find a seat in your section and row at the event you're attending for less, game time is going to give you not just 100% of the difference, 110% of the difference. It's the only way to buy tickets. I know there's a lot of questions about, well, how do I get to a game here? They don't do the paper tickets anymore. Just download Game Time. Make it easy on yourself. There's no better place to go. And when you download the Game Time app and you create an account, use code Locked On. You get twenty dollars off your first purchase. So maybe you're up here in Philly and you want to go to Opening Day. You still got time to do that. So again, terms apply. But create an account and redeem code Locked On. You get twenty dollars off. Maybe you can watch Spencer Strider and Zach Wheeler take on each other on Opening Day. So download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Connor, let's get to it. We do have an opening day series coming up this weekend in Philadelphia. Weather could be a little bit of a factor there. I know it's not looking great for Thursday, but hopefully they get all three games in. 
Opening day game, you talked about the pitching matchup. Zach Wheeler, Spencer Strider, two of the best pitchers in baseball. It's going to be a fantastic pitching matchup. Again, hopefully the weather looks okay so both these guys can go deep and do their things. It will be the first game of the season, so we'll see how deep they actually go. But what do you think about this pitching matchup? Excited to see it? Imagine any baseball fan would have to be. Yeah, dude, this is like the perfect time because – on Thursday, or if it gets rained out Thursday, on Friday, because they have that built-in off day, we become mortal enemies until the end of October. <laughs> but in this moment, doing this podcast, it's such a fun team to watch down in Atlanta. And Phillies fans are going to kill me for saying that. But Spencer Strider is going to have an amazing year on the mound. And to see Zach Wheeler get the extension he got and to know that these guys are going to face off, for my money, they're probably the two best pitchers in the National League. I haven't seen enough from Yamamoto at the major league level. Nobody has to know if he's going to be that guy. And there's some other candidates places, but Strider Wheeler could be the top two in Cy Young voting. And to see that on opening day, how lucky are we? And to see them take on guys that have like MVP caliber play up and down both lineups, this is baseball heaven on day one. And there are no other fans in baseball besides Braves fans and Phillies fans that are going to get to see this. So I'm just pumped up about it. Yeah, I am too. Look, Spencer Strider, we, we, I know we were talking beforehand about you know working on a curveball in spring training, and it's looked really good, and he had a dominant spring training for whatever that's worth. But look, something he struggled with last year, the home runs, and you saw it in the postseason too. And look, it wasn't his fault. He pitched well enough in the postseason to win those games. The offense just didn't show up, but he has struggled with the home runs, or at least last year he did. That was a big reason why he didn't win the Cy Young, because he'd give up two or three home runs uh, th two or three run homers in a game and it would just blow up his outing and working on that curveball, it's going to have hitters thinking about that now and it's not going to be able to, to allow them to sit on that fastball up in the zone and when he misses this spot you know them take advantage so i think that's going to be a big pitch for him we'll see how much he actually uses it uh come the season but what a great matchup like you said just as a baseball fan there are times i wish i could take off my fandom and just enjoy it for what it's going to be because once the game starts i'll be rooting very hardly against zach wheeler and the phillies but it is is a from a baseball perspective like you said it can't get much better on opening day and hopefully these two guys do match up again whether it be later in the season or in the postseason because like you said could be two of the best pitchers in the national league so give me some of your keys to this series what are you looking for from the Phillies? I know it's just the first series of the year, but what are you looking forward to? Yeah, I need the approach to be better. That's kind of what ended the last uh, season for the Phillies. They didn't have a good approach at all against the Diamondbacks in the NLCS, and that's why they collapsed near the end of that series to a lesser team. All due respect to Arizona, they were not the more talented team, but they were playing better at the time, and that's all you need. But the point is, I want to see them. If Strider dominates them, okay. But try and live in the strike zone. I don't want to see them be too aggressive outside of it because that was a main problem. And the guy that I'm really watching too is Johan Rojas. He had 302 and over 150 at bats last year in the regular season. And then in the postseason was a complete liability. So he's made the team after hitting like 170 in spring because of his defense. A lot of people question if he should be up with the major league team. He's going to be the starting center fielder on opening day. And I want to see what he does hitting wise off of one of the best pitchers in baseball and then one of the best staffs in baseball after you eventually get through Spencer Strider. So how about you, man? What are you looking for from the Braves? Yeah, the bullpen for me, look, I, I, it's the first series of the year. I don't know how long a lot of these starters are going to go. I think you'd be happy you get five, six innings out of some of these guys. I feel like the Phillies have done a good job against the Braves bullpen over the last year or so. And the Braves have gone out, like we talked about, made some moves for that bullpen, brought some guys back. I want to see what they look like against some of these really good Phillies hitters to begin the season. So that's something I'll be watching. What does that bullpen look like, especially if the Braves have a lead late? Uh, what does the bullpen look like coming in against some of these really good Phillies hitters, especially those guys at the top we talked about, Schwarber, uh, Turner, Bryce Harper. How do those guys look and how does uh, Snicker utilize all those lefties that he has, carrying four lefties right now in the bullpen. So we'll see how they utilize them. All right, and finally here, who wins the series? Who's your MVP of the series? Yeah, I got to go Phillies to win it. Just it's the opening series. I'm going to go chalk and tell Phillies fans what they want to hear. Uh, the MVP of the series is going to have to be Zach Wheeler. I know he only throws once. I know it's kind of crazy to give it to a guy that's not going to play in every game of the series. But getting off to a start and if he can go out and outduel Spencer Strider, that's going to give the Phillies all the confidence that they need that, hey, OK, we can still hang with this team at home just like we have in the postseason the past two years. So uh, getting off to the right start and it's his first opening day start as a Philly. It's been Aaron Nola for six years. 
So that's a new experience for Zach Wheeler in Philadelphia. Uh, that's why it's so huge, because how you start really should jumpstart this team or can put you behind the eight ball. Yeah, so I'm going to go the opposite direction, and I'm going to tell Braves fans, Braves fans what they don't want to hear. I'm going to say the Phillies win this series. I just it it seems like the Braves start off a little slow, especially you know they start pretty much every year on the road, but it seems like they always start a little slow, and especially with the weather being what it is, maybe their offense, which again sometimes can start a little slow in cold weather, doesn't get going. So I'm going to say the Phillies win two of three in this one, but it's not going to matter, and we'll see what happens as the season unfolds. But I'm more so I'm just really looking forward to this. Match matchup again those pitching matchups that you have free pitching game two uh, against nola i mean it's not just the, the strider wheeler one uh, also i believe chris sale is going to get game three of this series so seeing what he looks like his first time out in the regular season for the braves against that phillies lineup but uh, i'm really uh, looking forward to this series gonna be a fun one gonna be a fun one to watch all year long between these two teams who i think are going to be dueling it out for the nl east and possibly in the postseason once again. I've heard some Braves fans say we got to avoid the Phillies in the postseason. That's not my mindset, Connor. I want to see you guys again, <laughs> and I want to take you out, and hopefully that happens, and hopefully we get to see that matchup again this year. Love but, it. Connor, thanks so much for joining, and thanks so much for doing this crossover episode with me. It's been a lot of fun. Make sure, if you're listening here, Locked On Braves, make sure you go give Connor a uh, subs uh, subscribe and Locked On Phillies over there and follow Connor as well on social media so looking forward to this season i'm sure we'll be doing this again throughout the year but that will do it for this episode of locked on braves and this crossover episode of locked on phillies again make sure you subscribe to both platforms and it is opening day week go out and enjoy some baseball and we will talk to you next time see you guys